us pray. Father God, we pray that you have your way in this place on today, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, you let me decrease and you increase, Father. Oh, God, I ask that you let the words of my mouth encourage your people's heart on today. Oh, God, send your anointing that the word may go forth in clarity and power. Hallelujah. Oh, God, have your way, Lord. Do what only you can do in this time. Hallelujah. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. Okay. Woo, hallelujah. Come and go with me to the book of John. I will be reading from John 4, verse 23. Amen? Amen. When you have it, say amen. And I'd like for you to stand in reverence to God's holy word. Amen? Is that all right? Is that all right? Amen. Listen prayerfully to the reading of God's holy and eternal word. But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Amen. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. So far the scripture. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My assignment today is to speak on the posture of praise. My, sub, my subtopic is the legitimacy of your praise. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I know that you all know what praise is. But let me remind you what praise is. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, by hearing, by hearing, which means to hear over and over again. So I'm going to tell you again what praise is. Praise is an expression of heartfelt gratitude and thanksgiving to God for all that he has done for us. It's a physical and vocal expression of our sincere appreciation to God for the wonderful blessings he have provided. When we are legitimately praising God, it will lead us into worship, which is the highest form of praise. Amen? That's when we are ministering to God for who he is and not just for what he has done for us. Amen? So my question to you today is, is your praise real? I want to know, is your praise real? Are you praising him for real or is it an emotional display? Are you praising him for real or is it, are you doing it to be seen? Are you praising him for real or is it just because the worship leader instructed you to do so? Hallelujah. What's your purpose for praising? Legitimate praisers. They praise not to be seen. They praise not to be heard. Not because the worship leader told them to. But they do it because according to 2 Samuel 22 and 4, the, he is worthy of the praise. We praise him because he is great. Psalms 96 and 4 says, for the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. According to Psalms 50 and 23, we praise him to glorify him. Amen. Amen. And we praise him because he sacrificed his life for us while we were yet sinners. According to Romans 5 and 8, he allowed himself to be crucified on the cross. Hear me now. He allowed himself to be crucified on the cross. We praise him because he got up from the grave on the third day. Um, with his hand, according to, with all power in his hands, according to Matthew 28 and 18, just as he said he would. He said he'd get up on the third day and he rose on the third day. Is your praise legitimate? Amen. Is it true? Is it genuine? What's your praise posture? Do you shabak him? Shout to the, loud, the Lord with a loud voice, or do you barack him? Do you kneel down before the Lord? Hallelujah. Do you halal him like David did? Like you totally lost your mind? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you have a heart attitude of praise? Hallelujah. Where is your heart? Is your heart set on praise? Hallelujah. 
Proverbs 4 and 23 tells us to keep the heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Amen. What's the posture of your praise? Is it set on praise? Is it set to praise? What's your heart posture? Have the issues of life crowded out your praise? Have your issues, everything that you've been going through, has it crowded out the praise that you're supposed to have? Hallelujah. Because the Bible tells us, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We don't want the rocks to cry out for us, but let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me hear you say hallelujah, church up in here. Hallelujah. If your praise is genuine, say hallelujah. If your praise, hallelujah, is genuine, say hallelujah. Oh God, we praise you on this morning. Are you worshiping the Father in spirit and in truth? Or are you just an imposter impersonating a worshiper? Hallelujah. Are you an imposter impersonating a worshiper? Hallelujah. And, and are they, is it affecting your heart attitude? Hallelujah. What's your heart attitude? What's the temperature of your heart attitude? Hallelujah. Are you busy making excuses for why you can't praise? Well, let me explain that making excuses is just a crutch for the uncommitted. Amen. It's a crutch for the uncommitted, for those that are not committed to the Lord, for those that are not committed in their walk to the Lord. It's just a crutch every time you make an excuse. Hallelujah. However, praise is a commandment from God and there should be no excuse. There should be no excuses. Amen. God is seeking those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Will you be the one to worship him? In every season of your life, we should worship him. Amen. Every season of your life, when things are going wrong in your life and it feels like the walls are closing in, when you've been downsides on your job and you can't make the mortgage, hallelujah, can you still worship him in spirit and in truth? When the children are not acting right, when you receive that unfavorable doctor's diagnosis, my question is, can you worship him in spirit and in truth? Can you barack him when you've taken the wrong turn in life and can't see your way back? When you've allowed yourself to sink into depression, can you still praise him? Can you barack him? Can you give up a praise to him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you give him a Paul and Silas praise? Can you still praise him with a barren womb like Hannah? Amen. Can you praise him? When there's nothing there, but can you praise him when you're stuck on empty? When your tank is on empty, can you praise him? Hallelujah. God is still God. He never changed. He will be the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. God is still God. Can you halal him like David did? Can you give him a crazy praise? Can you trust him when you can't trace him? Can you trust him when you can't trace him? Can you trust him when you can't trace him? It is said that when the praises go up, the blessings come down. According to Psalm 67, 5 and 6, it reads, let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. Can you dance before the Lord with all your might like David did and give God a crazy praise? Give God a crazy praise. Hallelujah. The Father seeketh such to worship him. Will you be the one the Father is looking for? Will you be the one? What's the posture of your praise on today up in here? But most important, is it a legitimate praise? Is it, is it for real or is it an imposter? Are you impersonating praise? Hallelujah is the highest praise. I know you're standing, but I want you all to stand on your feet and give God a hallelujah praise. Oh, give God a hallelujah praise. Just, just by being in this room. Just by being in this room. 
room today, you need to give God a hallelujah praise. Because so many people didn't make it today. So many people didn't make it today. Hallelujah. If the Lord has healed your body, you need to be praising him. If he has saved your family members, you need to be praising him. If he has made a way for you, you should be praising him. If he has given you a miracle in your finances, you need to be praising you. If he has healed some relationships, you should be praising him. Oh, I know God has done great and mighty things for me. Oh, God, that's why I give God a crazy praise. Hallelujah. I give him a crazy praise up in this place. Hallelujah. Can you barack him? Can you lift him up? Can you give God the glory? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is your praise, is your praise authentic? <laughs> what will happen is at some point in life, grandma's prayers, they were fine. But when life has a way of bringing you to your own knees and making you seek God for yourself, you might, you know, you grow up in church sometimes and you, you know, you, you know how to play church. You know, you watch the people shout, you imitate them, but when Experience happens in your life. When trials and tribulations come to your own life, then you remember when grandma would make you pray and you didn't want to pray. You remember the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous. They avail much. Amen. I thank God for an authentic encounter and an experience with God. I can truly at this moment give the mic back to Dr. Denise, but... <laughs> Amen. Certainly, protocol has already been established. We thank God for our Archbishop, Pastor Melaine and Pastor Joe, Overseer Curtin, to everyone that's under the sound of my voice. Amen. My wife, my, my mom is here. Amen. Amen. My wife and my oldest and my youngest child. Amen. And my niece and nephew are in the rear as well. We just thank God for all of you. Amen. We're going to go right to the word of the Lord. Um, my uh, subject given for consideration was the power of praise. Um, a lot of things that Dr. D already spoke of, um, but these are the things we need to rehearse. Repetition. Um, certainly when the enemy comes in, the spirit says, or rather the word says, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. So the repetition is necessary. So we're going to go to the word of the Lord. I'm going to give you a couple of different scriptures, but I'll begin at 2 Corinthians Chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. Herein begins the reading of God's holy and eternal word. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted, exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. So far, the scripture. Praise. A uh, simple definition for praise is the joyful recounting of what God has done for us. Praise and thanksgiving go hand in hand as we thank God and offer appreciation for who he is. To praise God is to call attention to his glory. As uh, Psalms 34 and 1 lets us know that we bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in our mouths. Our soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. So it is a cooperative that we don't do this exercise or we, we actually want to get as many on the bandwagon as possible. So we make his name great. We make his name large. We make his name known to others. So it's an appreciation. And as we are appreciating God and extolling him for his benefits and living a life that is pleasing to him, it's also calling attention to his glorious um, nature, the way that he brings us out, the way that we are believers are sometimes able to go through storms and people look at us and they're waiting for us to react because they're used to reacting a certain way. They don't understand how the believer is under, um, under pressure 
able to conduct themselves with such grace. How the believer under pressure does not curse out the boss like other people might. How the believer under pressure does not commit adultery when they might have an issue in their marriage. How the believer under pressure does not act like the world acts. So when we magnify and we praising, you know, there, there are different forms that we use to praise God. Some of us dance, some of us shout, we sing, we lift our hands. There are different things that we do to praise God, especially in the black church. You know, we're charismatic. There are different expressions that we have of worship. But the way that we allow our lights to shine before others when we go out into a dark world, as I read before, it calls attention to God because people, people study you. When you say you're a believer, people study you and they're waiting to see how does he act when faced with uh, uncertain circumstances? How does she act when her diagnosis of cancer in stage four and she's told that she's going to uh, only have a certain amount of time to live? How is that person going to act? How are they going to keep it together? Are they going to curse God and die as it were? Because we understand as the situation, as rather the scenario with Job, we understand that he was afflicted, his children, all of his livestock and cattle, his property, all these things were touched. And the feeling of those around him was just like, you know what, sometimes it's not even worth it. Just curse God and die. And our circumstances sometimes will bring us to a point where we will look at other people that are seemingly prospering above us. We call ourselves living for God, living a set-apart life, coming apart from this uh alienating that and leaving this, that, and their own. But it seems that, that others are not even trying to do the right thing or doing better than us. They're making more money than us. They're married and we are not. Their children are prospering. Different things that we, we've set aside a sanctified life. And sometimes the enemy will play on us and make it seem like there is nothing. It's for nothing. And then you'll get those that will even try to ridicule us. It's like, oh, all oh, that's not necessary. You're praising God and the, your life is this. You're praising God and, you know, you, you, you got laid off. You're praising God and your husband got cancer. You're praising God and your daughter's pregnant. Uh, you're praising God and your son's, you know. It, people, people talk about us or they, they look for uh, a reason. Sometimes it's a loophole so that they don't have to make a commitment. But as I would have you understand, there are different even benefits of praise. Now, praise is not something that we necessarily only do. You know, sometimes, and we live in a culture where we've heard about the prosperity gospel. You know, praise God because the car is coming and shout in seven days. You, no, 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 no. That's not what praise is. You know, hey, it has its place. And I'm not saying God won't do some things. But we praise God for his majesty. We praise him for his wonderful works. We praise him because he saved us, because he thought enough of us to bring us out of darkness into this wonderful light. We don't necessarily praise him for things. We praise him for who he is. Praise has benefits even uh, to our brain. When we praise God, there are different serotonin, different hormones and things that are released as we are praising God. I don't know if you've ever come into the house of the Lord and you felt like you had a ton of cinder blocks on your back, but when you got into the praises of God, the spirit of heaviness began to lift off of you as you lift up your hands, as you allow the Lord to minister to your heart, the spirit of heaviness, it fell off of you. You might have came in with a headache, Dr. Denise, but as you got into the praises of God, the spirit of the Lord allowed that heaviness to come off you. So as those transmitters, those neurotransmitters begin to fire and serotonin and different hormones are released, it makes you feel good in your spirit and it allows you a calm and it brings a calm to your situation and the spirit begins to minister to you. So these are our weapons. Amen. What happens in our lives is that sometimes we get bogged down, we get overwhelmed with things. And I'm not saying that no, we all have circumstances. We all have things that we are going through. We all have fights. Some of it is internal. Some of it is with, you know, it's external. But we all are going through something. And what happens sometimes is that the things that we're dealing with, it causes us to feel like you ever felt like you're just going through so much you can't breathe? I just need, I just need a second. I just got to catch my breath. It's just like something else. You know, something happened yesterday. Now is this. This happened this week. You know, Pastor Johnson, I don't know if she's watching. She lost five relatives in the course of like eight days. It's like, when is enough enough? One thing happens. Then you think you get over that. Then something else happens. And it's like you get over that. Then something else happens. You know, when is enough enough? And what happens is our praise sometimes gets stifled. Bishop preached a message series about nine or ten years ago, and he was talking about Python. 
And in that message, and, and I like watching nature shows, and I watch how the lions and the different predatory animals, they attack. And most times what they do is they go for the throat. And when the python constricts around its prey, it either goes for around the rib cage, and every time that person tries to wriggle out and get free from the situation, and he actually tries to expand his rib cage to get another breath, the python, every time he breathes, the python gets tighter. Every time you try to wriggle out, every time you would want to lift your hands, python gets tighter. Every time you would want to try to break out of it, the lion will get gramped, uh, clamped down tighter on your neck. So what happens is we come in. And we understand, we've been told, you know, all along, don't you know what praise is for? It's an instrument of war. We know that, but we don't exercise it. And that is what our instrument is. I can't, I can't go to work. I can't move the train if I don't have my instruments, James. If I don't have my brake handle and different things I need. Kim is in the medical field. If she don't have her stethoscope and different things that she uses in her field, we cannot be effective without our instruments. So praise is the instrument of the believer. Praise is not hocus pocus. It's not magic. It's not something we can cock. It's not grims. It's not mother goose. It's not a fairy tale. It's our lifestyle. It's in our DNA. It's what we do to combat the enemy. So it's necessary to recognize that I've got to free myself from some things because if the enemy were to have his way, I would allow the situations that I'm going through to choke me out and take my very breath. And what happens is the Bible, we understand the Bible, it tells us in Psalm 100, let everything that have breath, praise the Lord. Not 100, you know which, one, yeah, 150, I had it. Let everything that have breath, praise ye the Lord. But if I don't have breath, if I let these situations overtake me, every time I try to get out of it, and I don't want to lift my hands. The spirit of the Lord is going high in the sanctuary. And I feel bound over something I did five years ago. I feel bound because I didn't satisfy God. I didn't make every I. I didn't dot every I and cross every T. I feel bound because of the things I'm going through. And I come in and the spirit of the Lord wants to move on my life. And I feel so bound. I don't exercise the liberty. Stand fast in the liberty wherein Christ has made you free. All of us have sometime or other done something to where we have felt like we were not worthy to be in God's presence. And that thing can weigh on you heavily sometimes and keep you in that state sometime where you feel like they're looking at me. And it's like sometimes it's like the scripture says, you know, other people are considering you a grasshopper. You always worry about what other people, oh, she looking at me. If I, if, if I cry, if I snot, they're going to think I'm going through something. It's not all the time that you're going through something or you did something wrong because you're crying. It's just that our hearts are filled with praise. Like the scripture said, that's why my heart is filled with praise. So we praise because of who God is, because he's been good to us. The Bible lets us know that God inhabits the praises of his people. He rests in it. He sits upon it. He dwells within us when we sing songs of worship and adoration. Amen. God, he soaks that thing up. And praise also, like I was saying before about the neurotransmitters and the serotonin, praise also is cathartic. Yes. When you cry, and again, it's not because something is wrong. When you just let off that good cry, whether it's grief or whatever, sometimes you are heavy, you're, you're you know, burdened down. But when you just give it to God and you just lift your hands and allow God to minister to you, it's a catharsis and you feel better. So all these different things, praise has an effect on our well-being. Praise also, it enlists the protection of God. Amen. We know in the scripture where it's, it spoke of ambushments being set up against the enemy, the enemy came in. Praise will put your enemy in a situation. People will uh, sometimes set a trap for you, and they'll, they'll make one trap and fall in seven different ways. But praise is something that it will go before us, and it will set ambushments against those things that have come to overtake us. As Dr. Denise had forestated previously about Paul and Silas being in jail. Praise, it breaks chains, and it opens doors. Now, there are different expressions of praise. I won't go through all of them because she already preached. I'm just giving a little Sunday school. Dr. D preached. Bless you. Amen. I would told her, sacrifice. I would yada, lifting up the hands of the Lord. When Moses held up his hands, Israel prevailed. Our Barak is bowing or giving reverence to God in recognition of his holiness and his sovereignty over everything that lives. Shabbat is to shout or to lift up your voice and praise God with all of one's might. And Zama is to sing or play instruments or music to express 
a joy in God's presence. A halal, of course, is to celebrate or to boast or to rave. And, of course, that's where we get our root word, hallelujah, which is to praise God through a physical motion. And to heal, of course, is to sing or to dance or to praise or to various different ways through instrumentation and singing to praise the Lord. Amen. Lastly, I'd just like to leave with you, just again, speaking of um, situations sometimes get us to a place to where we feel we're unworthy. And I'll just go through this uh, quickly, how when the lepers, there were 10 of them, we all know the story, there were 10 lepers that went, um, all 10 were cleansed, only one came back to give Lord the Lord praise, and that person happened to be a Samaritan who uh, was thought to have been a half-breed, who thought was, you know, the Jewish, the, the cultural differences of some would have made one feel that they were not worthy to receive the blessings of the Lord. So the Samaritan person was the only one that returned to give praise to God. But the scripture, I think it's in Luke 17 and 11, it opens up that said Jesus was afar off. And they lifted up their voices and cried, Master, have mercy on us. Again, when you're in a situation and you don't feel worthy, that praise, it becomes stuck seemingly. It's like you want to lift your hands, but you can't. You want to praise, but you can't. But when you're in trouble and you have no way out, when you're in trouble and your very life is about to be overtaken, when you're in trouble and if you don't cry out to God, it's all going to end whether or not by me taking my own life or by just the oppressions of life wearing me down to a place that even causes you to get sick. When you're in trouble and you have no other way to get free, the scripture says he cried out, they cried out with a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. I don't care what your situation is. God is never too far that he can't hear from you. I don't care what your situation is. There's nothing that you have done that will make God turn his back on you. I implore you today to allow God to suture those wounds that I implore you that if there's something that you need to cry out about, don't let circumstances weigh you down and keep you bound. Don't allow past mistakes, past failures, what you might have did last week, what you might have been did last night, <laughs> if the truth be told. But God is faithful to us, and he's not willing that any of us should perish. Our praise is our weapon, and there are different times. You know, we have, we have, you know, maybe if you want to go fishing or whatever, you know, I might use a little baby hook, but for certain fish, I got to use a bigger hook. If I'm going for live game, I might hunt with a bow and arrow, but sometimes you got to use a rifle or a shotgun. With the enemies we're facing, we have to assess, assess the weapons that are in our inventory and proceed accordingly because the enemy is not playing with us. He's not fighting fair. So we have weapons at our disposal. We have the praises of God that should be in continually in our mouth. We're able to lift our hands. We're able to press through. We have God at our disposal, warring angels that are going before us at our disposal. Paul and Silas prayed at the midnight hour and the jail shook and there was an earthquake. Their bands were loose, such to where when they cried out, the jailer even, he saw the miracle of the bands being opened and the prison doors being unlocked and he cried out, what must I do to be saved? So your prayer is not just a weapon for you, it's a weapon for others as well that somebody else might see through you and cry out, what must I do to be saved? Amen. Hallelujah. Giving honor to Archbishop, to everybody in their rightful places. I thought I was going to be the first one. I, they switched it on me. I thought I was going to, I, I thought I was going to be the opening act, but I'm not. I'm, to, I'm the closer. All right. So much I was going to say, the, what was given to me to speak on is that the, the purpose of praise. Whew, thank you, Lord. Thank you. I'm sorry. Give me a second. Praise. Scriptures are from um, Psalms 107, 7 and 8. Psalms 107, 108 says, Let them give thanks to the Lord, for he is unfailing love and his wonderful deeds. 
Hallelujah. So what is the purpose of praise? Hallelujah. The purpose of praise is to get you connected to God. Yes. It's like a relationship. When you start dating somebody, you know, you call, you know, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, I, I'm not, you gonna hang up. But you're spending time getting to know the person. That's the purpose really of praise. The more you praise him, the more you get to know God, the more he gets to know you. I'm just breaking it down in layman's terms. I'm sorry. My brothers and sisters here pretty much covered a lot that I had to say. That's the fall, fall down of being the last guy. You, you, they didn't get it all. But it's really to get to know who God is. It's really get to know, you know, God so he can get to know you. And the more you praise him, the more you'll see how great a God he is and how wonderful he is. And no matter what you're going through, he is God. And I stand today to say that. A few weeks ago, I couldn't even stand up. I couldn't stand up. I was on my hands and knees in my living room, crawling on the floor like a newborn. But I'm standing today. I'm standing today. I'm standing today. And yes, I thank God for the doctors and the nurses, but I know it was God. I know it was God. I got to keep moving. No, listen, you got to understand how good God is. And you really don't know how good he is until you get into something. And you call upon his name. See, it's easy if you ain't never been through nothing. You ain't never had no trial. You ain't never had no tribulation. Oh, you know, you know what? It's different. If you say, oh, I left my wallet at home, but no, you can go to, ain't go to an ATM. But when you ain't got no money and there ain't no wallet and there ain't nothing to do, it's different. But I thank God today. Come on now. Because I'm going to praise God in the midst of everything that I go through. I've got to praise him. I've got to give him praise this morning. Somebody needs to stand up and give God some praise this morning. Listen, there's so many... Thank you so much. There's so many trials and tribulations that we read from the Bible, like Paul and Silas. In prison, chained up. Chained up, couldn't go nowhere. Bound. Security guards, whatever you want to call it. And other prisoners. God made a way because they held up their hands and prayed. They praised him in the midnight hour. Hallelujah. When it seemed like it was darkest, it couldn't get no better. This is it. When some of us would be like, well, this is it. It's all over. But they praised God in the midst of what they were going through. I'm encouraging you that no matter what you're going through, MRIs, whatever you got to do, CAT scans, all that stuff. Somebody here know what I'm talking about. You've got to praise him in the midst of the storm. Listen, I could just, I could just hold up a mirror and tell that to myself. I've got to praise the Lord. Yes, I'm a human. Yes, I get a little afraid. I get scared. What is this giant thing? They want me to lay down and roar and things are spinning around and see but in the midst of it all, I've got to praise God. I've got to lift my hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you don't think you have to wave your hands, it could be you tomorrow. All it takes is some crazy guy on the Bell Parkway driving, acting crazy, little drunk or whatever it is for a Thanksgiving party or a function. Hallelujah. But in this season of Thanksgiving, now listen, first off, for me, every season is the season of Thanksgiving. I don't need no turkey. I don't need no stuffing. I don't need no yams, all that stuff. I praise him with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I can praise him with a, a fried bologna sandwich. That's where my praise is today. <laughs> you don't have to try to impress me with nothing. I don't need to be impressed. You know, I go to McDonald's as soon as I go to the cheese fact, whatever. It don't matter. I thank God for whatever's put before me. That's the way it is. I just got to be that way. I ain't at that point yet where I can't go certain places and do certain things. Come on now. But I just want to say today, and I know my time may be up, you've got to learn how to praise God in the midst of your storm, no matter what it is. And the longer you live, the, st the storms are going to get stronger. Trust me, those storms are going to get stronger. Yes, I made it through this, but God, the devil's got something planned again. But he carried me through this. God can carry me through the next one. I'm going to make it. Hallelujah. you got to tell yourself you're going to make it. You better preach that thing to yourself, you're gonna make it. You've gotta believe when you're in the darkness by yourself. I thank God for family, but sometime three, four in the morning, the enemy just messing with my mind. Messing with your mind. I mean hard. 
I can't even tell you some thought. I can't even say it. But God has kept me through those thoughts. And I wake up every morning. The first thing I said, Lord, I thank you. You better learn how to praise God. You got to learn how to praise God in the midst of whatever's going on. You think it's bad there's somebody laying next to you that's worse off than you. Hallelujah. Think about that. You think you got it bad. There's somebody else that's got it worse than you do. Hallelujah. So in the midst, I got to praise him. The purpose of praise is to be more so connected to God so that you can stand the trials, the tribulations, knowing that God is with you. Through it all, he said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. You better learn some scriptures, get some backups. Because some days you can't reach Bishop. Sometimes you can't reach Pastor Elaine. You got to get something on the inside where you can go to yourself and say, God is able to do exceedingly and above all in my life. You got to go further than that. Hallelujah. In your life. Hallelujah. But I thank God. But you just need a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And through that, through your praise, through your worship, through your praise and your worship. Hallelujah. I don't praise him just to show off. I don't praise him because somebody's playing a certain song. I praise him just because. I don't care if there's no organist. I don't, you could drop a tambourine. I'm going to praise him. All you got to do, hallelujah, I don't have to hear Malayne sing. She's a beautiful singer and all that. I just need to be near the house. In fact, I don't even have to be in the house of the Lord. I felt myself praising him in the shower. They must have said, why is he in there for 45 minutes? Because I was on my hands and knees thanking God. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not embarrassed to say that either. You better, I can praise him on the Belt Parkway. Anyway, anyway, it don't matter. In my office at work, I'll close the door. Hallelujah. But I thank you right now. And I, 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 I feel something.
Tamara. Tamara was in a car accident, messed her shoulder up, but she's still here, so she got to praise him. I survived what could have took me out. My shoulder hurt a little, but I got to give God praise because that car accident didn't kill me. That's it, Isaiah. <laughs> you don't know what folk been through. You don't know what God brought us out of. You don't know how bad it was. And he stepped in and turned it around. COVID, cancer, crisis, confusion, chaos, but I'm still here. I'm going to celebrate my survival. Millions didn't make it, but I'm still here. There's war in Israel, but I'm still here. There's war in the Ukraine, but I'm still here. People are dying. Think of 
of his goodness and praise him. Lift up your hands and praise him. Give him the glory. Praise him. Jesus. Jesus. Blessed Savior. God for the message. You remember the song we used to sing, there's never a reason strong enough for not praising the Lord. Whenever the going is getting rough, just keep praising the Lord. Y'all remember Carol? Praise him. You know that you should. Everything is working together for good. Praise him. You can never afford to ever stop praising the Lord. You owe it to him. And if y'all got credit cards, if you don't pay on time, you get a penalty. Yeah, I hate them penalties. I try to pay on time. But every now and then you forget anyway. And then. How many late penalties do we owe the Lord? We didn't praise him like we should have when we should have. But I'm not going into next year with any late penalties. I'm paying off all my late penalties because next year We're about to see the glory of the Lord like we've never seen it. Look at somebody and say, get rid of them late penalties. They'll shut your credit card down till you pay your late penalty. I'm sorry you can't use this card. I, don't, I can't afford to let God shut me down and say I can't do nothing else for you because you didn't praise me enough for what I've already done. Anybody want to pay off your late penalty? Give him the best praise you got left. I can't go into next year owing God anything. I got to praise him now. 
He kept me this year. He blessed me this year. He provided this year. He made a way this year. He brought me out this year. I can't afford a late penalty. Thank you, Lord. If I didn't pay you on time, thank you, Lord. I'll pay my late penalty today. Thank you. I'm getting ready for a new year. I need credit with you. I need favor with you. I can't. I got to have my credit. And I got to have my record. In good standing. Because I don't know what I'm going to need you to do. And so we're here now. Thank you. My brothers and sisters, great job. Let's give our...